Hello Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. This week I am reviewing For Example by Rosemary Norman. This is not a proper book review. By which I mean that I am not doing a proper review, not that this isn't a proper book, although I have to say this is probably going to be my first negative review. By the way, do you like my makeup? I just watched the Shane Dawson video with Eugenia Cooley and uh, had to do the old blue lips, <laughs> blue lipstick, blue eyeshadow. Anyway, for example, is um, a collection by Rosemary Norman and it is published by Shoestring Press. It's her third full collection and then she's had a couple of pamphlets as well. Um, Although it's not a very long collection, it's only 30 pages or so, so I would probably argue that this is kind of a pamphlet, but whatever. I bought this in uh, the Amnesty Bookshop. So it was published in 2016 um, and she's had work published in Ambit, The Delinquent, uh, the Interpreter's House, London Grip, The North, The Rialto, The Shop, Smith Knoll and South Bank Poetry. That's a nice little, uh, it's a nice little acknowledgements page there. So on the her blurb she says that um, with video artists she makes poetry films where the fil poem is image or soundtrack and sometimes both. Their work is screened regularly at film festivals and can be viewed on Vim Vimeo. So um, that does sound interesting. I like consuming poetry in different ways. Um, so let's get into this book shall we? Um, I would argue that it is a small book or a large pamphlet and let's talk about aesthetics. So I actually quite like this cover. I think it is uh, simple, although I would, so it's called for example, and they've got the 4G, the EG written here. Uh, I would argue that just get rid of that because I like the color and I like this sort of plain text. I think it's a really nice opening cover. Um, the back looks uh, kind of nice, although um, I just, I don't know how people feel about the poet, poet's um, or author's photo on the back of the book, um, but uh, I just argue just look at the damn camera if you're going to have one at all, but whatever. Inside, the font is nice and I think the layout on the page is okay, although there are a number of um, poems that I didn't realise would go on to the next page because of how they're laid out. Oh yeah, so here's one. Um, the poem Bluebeard comes down to that far on the page so you think oh well that's m not even most of the page so I'm gonna that's it and then you turn the page and there's still more left so there's a couple of bits like that where it's really inconsistent like the length of their poems because there are other ones that go on you know a lot longer and, and take up the whole page and then don't go on so um that irritated me. This book irritates me. So here's the real reason. The structure of it. Here on this YouTube channel, we love a well-structured poetry collection. We love something that had some thought put into it. The journey that you take your reader on through a collection, especially when it's only 30 pages long, is really important because let's face it, if you've only written 30 pages of poetry, chances are more people are going to read this in one go. It took me an hour to read it the first time round and genuinely I've been wanting to do a review of this for three months but I've been trying to find like I've been trying to work out if there's something I'm not understanding about this. So I've reread this book like four times. This book is structured in alphabetical order. This book irritates me. Any story or, or coherence between these poems is lost. Thematically, it jumps all the, over the place. It um, goes from talking about artists and stuff like that, to talking about birds, to talking about um, barber chairs, to talking about death, to talk and it jumps thematically all over the place. And it is so, so annoying because uh, I genuinely considered um, getting all of the titles of the poems and reordering them how I would how I would order them to like take you on a bit more of a thematic journey, uh, maybe some coherence um, and then I was like no I'm not going to do your work for you so 
The other thing about it is, you know, not having a smooth thematic journey through your thing and letting things be jarring can sometimes work, you know, like you have a happy poem and a completely dark poem and letting those rub up against each other in a collection can really work, you know, it can be um, a really interesting juxtaposition between two poems who might be thematically very different. But it's not doing that either because it's just in alphabetical order. It doesn't, oh, it doesn't think about it. It's just in alphabetical order. And so with the title being, for example, it just kind of, to me, makes it feel like you just bought about 30 poems, but on very different subjects, all just in no order whatsoever. So it's almost like you had your collections out and then you were like, oh, I've just written some hodgepodge poems and I want to put them in a book, so I'm just going to put it together, put it as for example and put it in alphabetical order, which sucks. There are some poems that I really like in here and there are some themes that I really like in here. The writing style is so... Um, thought out and consistent. Uh, you have these short little lines, um, really like, there's no like consistent rhyme scheme or anything like that, but well, what is consistent is this paired back, um, minimalist, not minimalist, but like really controlled writing style that I do enjoy. I really liked uh, Collier Syndrome. Um, I like a poem that makes me Google. So I actually Googled what Collier syndrome is and it's basically like hoarding and Collier syndrome is named after the Collier brothers who lived in New York City and um, they just built up and up and up and up this stuff. I think it's written from the perspective of the syndrome. The other uh, one I really like is Flaneur. Um, so Flaneur is a... Uh, Shit, I better get this right. Ugh. We studied a bit of it in um, the nature and travel writing. Flaneur is like a French art movement. The Flaneurs would walk around a city and get intentionally lost and observe and write about what they see. And it's like, fl to be a Flaneur is to be a wanderer and an outsider. Um, and what is interesting is that flaneur is the male thing so it is it is uh, obviously uh, men artists 19th century women can't do art um so i've written really fascinated with the idea of like walking around the city and um alienating yourself and then you know watching it um and i really enjoyed it i think this poem is really great this is one that actually like breaks the form a little bit more. It jumps around a bit on the page and I really like that. So normally when I'm doing these um, reviews, I talk about the opening poem and the closing poem. But for me, that is pointless because the opening poem and the closing poem are only there because they happen to be at the beginning and end of the alphabet. The opening poem is called Alice's Couch and it is about um, a woman called Alice who painted Andy Warhol and I think this is, I don't know, kind of cool, it makes a comment about art um, and yeah, it's, it is okay. Um, I think it, maybe you could argue that opening with this poem of a, like a woman painting a man, um, a famous artist is making some sort of comment about art and maybe that links to the flaneur thing of the female and the male traditional artists. I don't, I don't know because I don't think that that's actually there. Some of these poems come across as like they're grasping at something incredibly deep and meaningful but we're not getting let in on that. Sometimes it feels pretentious. So the final poem is written in the perspective of Jesus or someone who thinks he's Jesus. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of interesting and then halfway through the poem it just loses me uh, because it gets this really sort of pretentious level to it where you're not entirely sure 
what they're trying to say. Although, the final line, with no false account of the causes and effects of resurrection, but our undoings undone. I think is a really nice way to end a collection. So our undoings undone. This collection I really struggled with. There are certain poems in there that I really enjoy, partly because I understood the like literary and artistic references in them, but largely I found quite a few of the poems um, maybe weirdly sort of pretentious and distancing and aware of their own intelligence and uh, sometimes because I didn't understand what they were talking about. It really took me out, like there was nothing to be read in it. I'd be interested to consume these poems as films. I think that um, any different way that you can consume a poem is really nice. Um, I think that this collection could have been a lot better. I think it could have been structured better. I think that structuring it in alphabetical order is really lazy and I think your poems deserve better than that. So if you're currently working on putting a collection together and you're like oh should I just put it in alphabetical order then they shouldn't be a collection if that's genuinely what you're thinking then it shouldn't be a collection in my opinion I think you should stop and I think you should take a long hard look at yourself okay so I really went in there on this book and <sighs> Rosemary if you ever listen to this video don't hate me I just think if you have a reason why Rosemary, that you put your poems in alphabetical order and it's just something that I am too stupid to realise, then by all means tell me. I'd be interested to hear and I would love to like have a video with you where you explain this poetry book to me. Comment below what is the worst poetry collection you've ever read because this is not the worst poetry collection I've ever read, I can tell you that right now. So comment below the worst poetry collection you've ever read. Well that's it for this week, thanks very much for watching, I'll see you all next week. Um, yeah please subscribe, like, do all the YouTube things and I'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.